as you can see, uh, Pete Shoemaker has a very broad range of interests, uh, from, from writing software, books, and acting and singing in Gilbert and Sullivan Productions. Actually, actually, Pete and I share that because I also act and sing in Gilbert and Sullivan Productions. <laughs> yeah, uh, next slide. And also, Pete uh, put in his own home solar system, and he has uh, he sold 50 systems at uh, home solar systems, and he has 10 years experience here at Pacific Energy Center teaching solar. So tonight he's going to uh, talk about a very current topic, different ways for implementing solar and storage systems, which have become very popular recently due to the public safety power shutoffs. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is a good follow-up to the talk that Sarah just gave on batteries. Simple takeaway talking about PV systems with backup and the difference between DC coupled and AC coupled and how they play out in the market. Now, as you know, PV modules produce DC power. There we go, <laughs> DC power. And in batteries store only DC power. That's inverted to AC when you get into the grid. So the key thing here is what happens to the power between when it's generated by the PV system and when it goes into the battery. How that happens. And if that power then stays DC from the battery, and some of that power or all of it can go into the battery straight as DC, it's called DC coupled. If, if it's inverted to AC and then back to DC before it hits the battery, then it's called AC coupled. That's just the terminology of how it works. Now the inverters that play, oh, will play into this and I'll go into some schematics here. There's a typical PV inverter, which is very ubiquitous in, in a lot of systems, that is, goes from DC to AC. You know, around, there's lots of different sizes. There's a battery-based inverter that goes bi-directional, DC to AC and backwards, that interacts with the batteries. And there's also a third mount, which is a hybrid inverter, which is kind of a combination of both of those two, which has decision-making software to see which mode it's best to operate in. So these are all out in the marketplace and, and they're very viable now as these things move along. So here's a schematic here, very simple, of a DC coupled system. If you look on the left there, there's the PV system. It goes straight to DC through a charge controller to the battery bank. Then the inverter comes and pulls some of that out as needed, sends it into the main panel of the closer to the grid. That's a simple DC because the power is straight from DC to the modules. On an AC coupled system, you're going to have two inversions. You have a standard PV inverter that's very common in all systems, goes to AC, and as needed, then some of that power is shunted back through the battery based inverter into the battery bank to go be pulled out as necessary. Now, not, so now the question is which system is better, AC or DC? It's really obvious. Oh, so excuse me, there's one, so there's a hybrid inverter that does both of those things with that decision making software deciding which one can go through. So it's less called, so called a DC coupled system because some of the power can go straight. DC without going to AC. Now, the question is which one's better? There's obvious, there's obvious criteria, one of which is if you have two inverters and you have two conversions, you've got to have expense and extra losses. That's obvious. But there's other factors that play into this out in the marketplace. One of them was not just the cost of the inverters, but the availability of the inverters and the different sizes. You want to make sure you have sizes that fit all. And also the operating voltage of the inverters. If you operate at a higher voltage, then you can have smaller wires to deliver the same load. Not small wiring can be safer and also can reduce your costs. There's a number of different factors other than the obvious ones. The PV inverters are ubiquitous and they have a lot of different prices. They're low cost, very high efficiency, and they operate at from 600 to 1,000 volts, high voltage. That's very advantageous. As opposed to the battery based inverters, which are a, a higher cost, a lower efficiency, and a higher voltage. They're at 120 volts, so they need higher wiring. So these are all playing out in the market. It's very dynamic, there's no clear answers here. So let's see how the market plays out, and you can see that pretty much the market is going to decide. Right now, the market is pretty evenly split, so it's kind of a good test. Half of the market right now, mostly half, is Tesla, which is an AC coupled system. The other half is Silver Edge, which is DC coupled. There's a few smaller players that will get a little bit bigger, but they're all, right now it's kind of two, and they're just seeing how they play out. Uh, Tesla, as you know, has the, the uh, power wall, and that's basically a battery with a built-in DC uh, a bi directional inverter. It's at one box, you just bolt it on the wall with some <coughs> electronics, it can easily be retrofitted into existing systems. So it's a great retrofit on the AC side, as you can see here on the schematics. You take an existing PV system, you're going to go battery backup, you put one or two test the power walls, get some electronics in there, and you can adapt to just about any system very easily. Even though there's two inverters, it's got a lot of flexibility there, so that can, that can outweigh it. Whereas Solar Edge, on the other hand, 
has a DC coupled system with their own proprietary hybrid inverter and a battery that does not need an inverter because that's handled in the inverter itself. They have an LG Chem battery, but they're developing their own battery system now. And you can they have this DC hybrid thing that I showed earlier, where the hybrid inverter takes, decides what goes when. A lot of the power can be immediately inverted to AC and go out to the grid or to the loads, but you can also have some go to DC back and forth. So that's what's playing out in the marketplace, and pretty much that's what's going to decide. Now, of course, you've heard about the public shower safety power shelves. There's one going on today, perfect example. <laughs> Battery uh, demand was high anyway, that's driven it through the roof. So what's happening now, you're going to hear about people, should I get a generator, should I get this battery backup? So the key thing if you're going to do batteries, which obviously I prefer, is that you have to have a sub-panel or somehow a way, a way to isolate your critical loads. Doing a whole house backup with batteries is not smart and not as easy to do. So you have to have some way of isolating the loads, and if you do that, you can have uh, a very effective system. So the takeaway here is that PV plus batteries, as Sarah said, can, is an evolving technology with a great growing market share and can be a very much cleaner and safer alternative to generators. Amen. Yeah.